I'm Kathy Brown, registered dietitian and yoga teacher and mom. And today I am finally here to bring you a video about introducing solids um, to your babies because I've done a lot on breastfeeding recently. And while the nutrition that mom takes in during breastfeeding is very, very important, it's a little bit more, um, there's a little bit more kind of thoughts around introducing th solids. And so I just wanted to talk about that for a minute and clear a few things up. And um, yeah, so we'll go from there. So first of all, before I get going, make sure to subscribe, like this video if you found some value in it, and let me know in the comments um, what your baby's first food is or was um, and or what you're planning on feeding them at first. So the first thing that I want to mention is to always talk to your pediatrician before changing up anything in your baby's routine, um, but especially solids. Um, because every baby is a little bit different, that's why there's a range of recommendation from four to six months of when to introduce solids. And it's really all up to your baby. Your baby decided when he or she was ready to be born and your baby will also show you all the signs that they are ready to eat. Now, some of those signs, well, the first thing is that they should have really good head and neck control. Um, you know, this one right here is still a little slouchy <laughs> in her, with her neck kind of falling forward a little bit. Um, but if they have really good neck control and they hold it up and they're strong, that's one really good indicator. Um, another one is that they're interested in the food that you are eating. You know, is your baby watching you as you bring... Oh, you, you. Is your baby watching you as you bring your spoon or your fork to your mouth and kind of watching your food, looking at your food, maybe salivating over your food, anything like that. So notice those kind of things. Both of those are really good indicators of readiness. Now, when you are ready to start introducing solids, um, there are a couple of things to take into consideration. The two big ones are being, number one is simplicity is key. And the reason for this is for food allergies or um, intolerances. So single ingredient items, you know, if you're starting with baby cereal, don't get the multigrain, rice, oat, very, very simple, one ingredient. Um, no seasonings, no salt, no added sugar, none of the things to add flavor to it. Um, and the reason for this is babies' palates are super, super sensitive, um, but also especially with salt, um, their little kidneys are still developing and they don't need, overdoing it on salt is really easy. Um, and as I mentioned, one ingredient. So especially in the very beginning. So if you're doing purees from like the store-bought jars, look for, you know, just carrots or just peas or just, you know, whatever, one ingredient, no, you know, turkey dinners or anything like that where they have like, like the turkey, mashed potatoes and gravy all mixed up into one. Doesn't sound appealing to me at all anyways, but, um, you know, no mixes. Th those are for, for later on um, down the road. Um, the next thing you want to think about is, um, Two, two main nutrients, um, especially if you're still breastfeeding. Now, if your baby, if you've been breastfeeding and you switched to formula or you've been on formula this whole time, um, you know, formula it already has um, all the um, added supplements that a baby might need. Um, but as I mentioned in my previous video, which I will link right up here somewhere, um, is iron with breastfed babies. Babies um, store iron up until they're about four to six months of age, and that's when they've kind of used up all of their stores. And so this is the time when they will start to get a little bit more iron from their food, unless you've been formula feeding, in which there's already iron in the formula. So that being said, when you're feeding, once they've established a good eating pattern, it's important to look for high iron foods. So the big one is that is recommended a lot 
is um, iron fortified cereals, like I mentioned before, either the rice or the oat. Um, personally, I recommend oat to start with because um, there's just a little bit of interesting things with rice that I can save for another video. Um, but yeah, so iron fortified um, baby cereal or, um, and as they, sorry, as they get a little bit older, you could do like bean purees, make sure that it's cooked really, 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 really well, like overcook your beans because <laughs> you don't want any of those skins to be in there and then puree it like crazy. You want the smoothest hummus consistency that you can find. Um, and again, no added salt, no added seasonings or anything like that. Um, but so bean purees are really good. Um, and also if you do, um, things like tahini or nut butters, you can spread them really, really thin because you don't want the stickiness to, to choke baby. Spread really, really thin on a piece of toast. Um, and the reason you use toast is because bread can become gummy and can also choke baby. So we want toast, really thin layer of a, a nut butter or um, tahini or something like that. Um, so those are my first tips for now. I'm gonna have a part two coming up, but I wanna keep these concise. So I will see you in the next video. Comment below and let me know any questions you have about introducing solids and I will make sure to add them in that next video. So until next time, see ya.